Well, hi, church family. We are in the final week of our Bible reading plan through the New Testament letters of the Apostle Paul. Um, now, every part of the Bible is rich and significant and God-breathed. For many of us, though, Paul's letters are a huge part of how we find guidance from God. Um, while they're not any more inspired than any other part of the Bible, they're letters written to New Testament churches and to New Testament Christians, and so a lot of us find practical and powerful guidance in them. Um, now this week, we're going to finish off the last two, Titus and Philemon. And real quick, before getting into these two books, I just want to let you know that, like always, we have a new Bible reading plan starting up. It'll start up July 1st, and we do these plans every three months just to consistently create opportunities for people to get into a Bible reading plan for how to read Scripture. Um, now, the plan that we start this Friday will take us through July, August, and September. We'll have the bookmarks out, and it'll be on the app. We'll be in the Old Testament this time, and we'll be going through five books during those three months. So if you've been faithfully reading, that's where we're going next. If you've fallen off with your reading or if you're just getting going, this is another opportunity to jump on board. The more time we spend in God's Word, the more opportunities we give the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to guide us, and to make us new. Now, back to this plan. This week, we're reading Titus and Philemon. Titus is the third pastoral epistle along with 1st and 2nd Timothy. And these books are called the pastoral epistles because they're letters to pastors and they give insight into how a church should function. And a fun aside, Titus is the book that we're studying right now for the summer Bible study. We're halfway through that study and we're doing it Tuesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. in the garage. If you want to come and get a chance to walk through this great book, at least the last three uh, weeks of going through this book, come on out on a Tuesday night. Um, now, Paul deals with several themes in Titus, but a common thread is that he talks about how the church is meant to engage with the world. And after talking about elders and false teachers and the danger that false teachers pose, Paul talks about how all of us have a role in showing the beauty of the gospel to those around us. He talks to older women, older men, younger women, younger men, and gives each group some instructions. And this means that every single one of us can find something for us in that section. He also addresses slaves, which would have surprised the early church because slaves wouldn't have been thought of to be worth the time to talk to. But Paul wants every person, even if they're in a painful and difficult situation, to know that God has a plan for how they show the world his glory. Now, Paul also talks about living as a witness in this world, and he talks a lot about self-control because it's such a significant way that we live in light of the future that God has promised us while dealing with the difficulties of our current status now. Self-control is how we deal with temptations towards anger, lust, jealousy, and greed. It's how we persevere in challenging seasons of marriage and parenting, and it's how we deal with the financial difficulties and opposition from our culture. Self-control is how we live in hope. We wait for Jesus as our Savior instead of manipulating and indulging our cravings in the immediate. This hope is desperately needed by the world. The more we show it through self-control, the more this world can see that we have something powerful to offer through Jesus. So here's good dinner table question, a good dinner table question to ask while reading Titus. What are the ways that each of us in our different seasons of life, can help the message of Jesus seem more real and more beautiful. Now, on to Philemon. Now, some people also call Philemon a pastoral epistle, but it's not clear whether or not Philemon was a pastor. At the center of the book of Philemon is a young slave named Onesimus. Philemon, to whom the letter is written, is Onesimus' master. And Paul is writing to Philemon, giving him instructions about how to receive Onesimus when he returns. This is because Onesimus was currently with Paul. And it's not 100% clear, but it seems likely that Onesimus had actually run away and possibly even stolen from Philemon. Paul has led Onesimus to faith in Jesus, and now he's sending him back. Now, this is a tough book in some ways, um, e even though the whole book is only 25 verses long. It's tough because we have a hard time with the fact that Paul would send a slave home to his master instead of fighting for his freedom. 
I want to invite you, though, as you read, to look at what Paul is aiming at as he gives instructions to Philemon. Paul's instructions shed light on what it could look like for a common faith in Jesus to change the way people from different spheres of life relate to one another. So here's a dinner table question when you're studying through Philemon. What are some ways that we as believers can overcome cultural barriers because of our common faith in Jesus? Have each person share and look to get as specific as you can. Now, let's finish strong with this reading plan, and then let's keep it going. God's word is a light in a dark place, and we all need that light.